a 200 track session in Logic with a 16 inch MacBook Pro. Absolutely unbelievable. Tracks after tracks after tracks. Wow. Okay. Crazy. Well, maybe not crazy, but at least very impressive. So 2019, basically it's 2020 now, 16 inch MacBook Pro, the bigger body, it's louder, it's more powerful. The heat sink has been improved and um, I use it as the complete hub desktop replacement in my studio, two 4K monitors attached to it. Um, it's running pretty much everything. But then again, it takes one cable, you can take it to any studio, you can take it uh, on the road, it's perfect for that. And so many of you had the question, how loud is this thing just with the built-in speakers? Well, let's take a listen, here we go. Yeah, that's pretty loud. Here we go, yeah. Yeah, this is pretty loud. You can hear me talk. With 64 gigs of RAM and a 2.4 gigahertz 8 core processor has, we're gonna set the buffer size to 64 and um, then look at our Evans Logic benchmark test each track has a sampler um, a ring shift modulator has a compressor yeah, and has a channel EQ and has a space designer so let's say you have a hundred tracks that would mean you have one two one two three four five uh, 500 basically calculations going on, events going on, the actual instrument uh, that's being played back, and then four effects. Now, if you do 150 tracks, do the math. All right, so we're gonna start here at um, like pretty conservatively. Let's just start where we left off, I think, at our last test with our 2017. I think we were at around uh, or 2018 max, something like that, we were around 140 tracks. Um, let's see if we can beat that. Also, this new 16-inch Mac has excellent speakers, so it might get loud a little bit. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pump this up here. It's pretty annoying. Wow, loud. So, and let's measure our cores. Performance meter here. All right. I'm going to turn on, let's be bold a little bit and go in sets of fives. All right. We're going to go to 150 tracks. Are you guys ready? Let's see. 150. Now, multiply this by four. You have 600 effects going on here at the same time. Hmm. This is all nicely working. Compressor. Yep. So the question is, why don't you just jump to 200 tracks? Why even start with 150? Why don't you just jump to, well, <clears throat> I found out that the easiest way to do it is to work yourself up. Just add five tracks or 10 tracks at a time. Uh, because I think it uh, has something to do with the distribution or the equal distribution on the virtual cores. So here the 16th core is like underutilized. And so if one of those cores peaks out, you would get a system overload. All of this testing is obviously very theoretical um, because that's a lot of processing going on right now. So once in a while, <clears throat> you would get a system overload that said 170 to 171 and you stop it. And then out of a sudden, you can keep adding tracks after tracks after tracks as the system figures out how to distribute them. That is a wild guess, by the way. So uh, another thing is, why would you not just... Um, oh, so any, anyways, I would then get up to... Um, so this is how I'm adding them and turning them on and on. And then I got to 200 
and there it is running completely fine all the virtual cores maxing out here and these notes are happening at the exact same time it's very unrealistic that in a real scenario you're going to have all the effects firing constantly at the exact same time but anyways so obviously this can replace a lot of imax and you know older mac pros why not just buy this all the time why what would hold you back from just using this well i can tell you one thing it would be uh noise um as the machine gets into full ramp up mode especially with a super thick graphics card here's that overload i spoke about earlier especially with that graphics card um you build up heat and then the fans kick in so if you record something and the laptop is very close by to the mic keep that in mind let's take a listen And now let's talk a little bit about real world scenario here. So in the song that you kept hearing before, um, right here, I got a Neutron um, transient shaper activated. I got tons of EQs. I got tons of compressors. One here at the bottom left is native instrument, a bus compressor, tons of vintage EQs. So you can run larger sessions without any problems with this MacBook Pro or with a 2019 <clears throat> earlier generation 15 inch or a 2018 or 2017 these multi-core machines are so powerful that you can throw so much at them the only drawback i would say drawback i would say is possibly the fans kicking in because the cpus ramp up so much uh it's not bothersome uh, at the desk i think because it's not that loud but of course if you have a microphone close to it like i said this could be the only thing but then again you could move the computer further away for example a lot of it has also to do that now the graphics cards it's like an eight gigabyte graphics card super powerful 64 gigs of ram all that consumes more produces more heat consumes more energy i should rather say so in that case you know a 16 gigabyte or a 32 gigabyte version with a lower spec graphics card might actually help you with that uh, it's not something that's absolutely needed for uh, audio production i don't think where uh, logic is able to tap into all that or is going to tap into all that uh, as much as for example premiere or final cut pro would um, other than that um, yeah 2017 2016 it's improved from 120 to 140 to 180 and now 200 tracks um, it's it's pretty impressive so i hope this helped you a little bit if you're on the fence of buying a 2019 or 2020 16 inch macbook pro um, yeah, I'm not going to get into the keyboard improvement and into the escape, uh, dedicated escape button and the dedicated power button. All that is nice. Um, the way I type on the keyboard, man, I get mistakes. Doesn't matter which keyboard. There's no keyboard that exists for me that's going to take care of my typing mistakes. Um, I didn't have any issues with the 20, previous 2019 and the previous 2018 15-inch version with the, with the shallower keyboards. Yeah, I type also on an external keyboard, as you saw on the shot before. So I hooked that up in, on my desk. And when I'm out and about, I don't care that much, but I don't do days and days of typing. That's not me. I'm a musician. So uh, if you hear all that chatter and banter about that keyboard, listen, this is really, really, uh, you know, this is really being super picky. And then, of course, the touch strip, it can be very useful if you use it for scrubbing the timeline to adjust, adjusting effects and so forth. And also for automation, keep in mind, if you want to ride a fader, that touch strip is pretty cool. So a lot of those folks who are saying, hey, I don't need the touch strip, give me a cheaper computer. That ain't, ain't going to happen. Whether Apple gives you a touch strip or not, you're still going to pay your $2,400 up to four or $5,000 for the machine. So if you have it, it's an added bonus. Just get used to it. You can use it for every app. There's a different configuration. Photoshop tools, perfect. The brush sizes, all of that. So just get used to working with it and uh, stop complaining, right? Leave the complaining to me. All right, have a great one. Thanks for tuning in.